Good evening, everyone. Um, so our work is mainly motivated by newly emerging solid state lidars, which are promised to allow independent steering of depth measuring ray. So the idea is that uh, solid state lidar can focus depth measurements on the part of the scene which are relevant for a particular scenario. So for example, in emergency braking, you would like to keep most of the depth measurement just in front of the vehicle, while when turning on a complex uh, road intersection, you would rather keep depth measurement equally distributed around the scene. Um, the principle of these devices, as far as I understood, is uh, as follows. So the laser beam is emitted, it's split it and transmitted through an optical phased array. This optical phased array consists of surface element which allow to adjust its optical properties. Controlling these optical properties allows to steer uh, laser beams independently into desired directions. Then the laser beams are reflected again from, from the scene and captured on a sped array uh, using some optics. Um, since we don't have any autonomous car, we focus on kind of um, artificial goal in which we try to learn to reconstruct dense 3D voxel map from sparse depth measurements and simultaneously optimize reactive control of depth measuring rays along some expected trajectory of the vehicle. Um, the overview of the proposed pipeline for active 3D mapping is as follows. We've got sparse measurements denoted by X, and we learn parameters of a 3D mapping network, theta. Uh, this 3D mapping network takes sparse measurements as an input and provides dense 3D voxel maps as output. Then we take currently available map and we plan depth measuring rays in order to uh, decrease uh, map reconstruction accuracy. Um, finally, solid state leader measures the depth along uh, planet rays and provide uh, sparse depth measurements. Uh, since planning is deterministic procedure or function of a currently available map, these sparse measurements are uniquely determined by parameters theta. Both learning and planning minimize common objective function logistic loss between reconstructed map and some ground truth map. Uh, subject to some budget constraints on the number of rays we can cast along the expected vehicle trajectory. Um, I will first speak about learning, considering mapping, uh, the planning to be a deterministic procedure which provides some rays and consequently following sparse measurements. So the result of planning is not easily differ uh, differentiable with respect to theta. So the learning, uh, which is just minimization of the logistic loss with uh, respect to this parameters theta, is um, solved as follows. We locally approximate this criterion around some initial point, theta zero, and uh, then we use stochastic gradient descent on this uh, approximated objective to obtain new reconstruction parameters. Then we, again, locally approximate this logistic loss around uh, new parameters and again use stochastic gradient descent to find the new reconstruction parameters. So we iteratively optimize sequence of approximated objectives. Ideally, it seems to me that we would like to find fixed point of this mapping, which would assure uh, local optimality of the objective and the statistical consistency of the learning process. By statistical consistency, uh, I mean that the training distribution of sparse measurements uh, would corresponds to the one obtained by the planning procedure. Um, in practice, there are no guarantees that any fixed point exists, so what we do is just reiterate until validation error stops decreasing. 
Uh, so now let me uh, say a few words about the planning procedure. So the input to the planning procedure is uh, the currently available map and the output are uh, depth measuring rays which will in turn decrease the logistic loss of this map as the most. Since the ground through is not available for in planning online, uh, we have to approximate the objective somehow. So we, we have to approximate it from the currently available map. This map consists from voxels, and for each voxel, we've got uh, occupancy confidence, which determines probability distribution that this voxel is occupied or is unoccupied. Um, we model the current loss in this particular voxel as a entropy of this probability distribution. It basically corresponds to the logistic loss in this voxel uh, with ground through generated from this probability distribution. And in planning, we can cast rays. We know the direction of this rays, but we don't know the length. This measurement, this steps measuring rays could be uh, reflected from some previous voxels. So we also model the probability that uh, the voxel I is not visible in uh, particular uh, ray J. And in planning, we can cast multiple rays. So we uh, basically model the probability that voxel I is not visible by any of the rays. Then the expected loss is uh, modeled as a product of the current loss and the probability. Uh, and the total expected loss is just sum of this voxel-wise losses. So the planning of depth measuring rays for L following position is in our case minimization of this criterion subject to uh, budget constraints on the number of rays we can cast at each particular position. Uh, we've tried, it's quite complex combinatorial task. We, uh, we tried several convex approximations, but none of them was uh, sufficiently convincing with respect to a naive greedy algorithm. In addition to that, it turns out that even the naive greedy algorithm is quite time consuming because we've got millions of voxels and hundred thousands of rays. So we proposed prioritized greedy algorithm, which is approximately 50 times faster than the naive greedy algorithm. Uh, we also derived upper bound on the approximation ratio of the proposed prioritized greedy algorithm uh, as a function on the uh, optimal coverage. So for example, if uh, optimal subset of rays can cover 50% of voxels, then we know that the proposed prioritized greedy is not worse by more than 30% with respect to the optimum. Um, so let's go to experiments. So in our experiments, we have used quite standard structure of this 3D mapping network, which consists of several 3D convolutional and the convolutional layers, which has in total 20 million parameters. Um, since uh, these steerable solid state lidars are not yet commercially available, uh, we use uh, Velodyne 3D point clouds from uh, the publicly available Kitty dataset to simulate this device. Um, we provide a tilted quantitative evaluation in the poster and the paper. Uh, for now, let me just show uh, qualitative evaluation for an extreme case in which we are allowed to cast only 200 rays per a, um, position of the vehicle. So corresponding uh, sparse measurements maps uh, are shown in uh, the first row and the reconstructed maps with typical seen objects such as trees or cars are shown on the second row. Um, that's everything, let me just show the uh, summary video. Um, so in the left bottom corner, we show sparse measurements. Uh, we show sparse measurements registered in a common global map. And in the right bottom corner, we show the reconstructed map. Uh, thank you. And 
I'll be happy for questions. Are there any questions? Okay, well, I have a question over here. Um, it's, it's very nice to see that you've got an example where some vehicles are moving around in the scene. Um, wondering if you can speak a bit about how your system handles the case of the, the vehicles moving around. Okay, that's the question I was really afraid of, but <laughs> thanks for it. Um, okay, that's true. We somehow ignore dynamic objects in the scene. We basically reconstruct them and then we merge local reconstructions. So basically moving object will average out and they disappear. So we more or less rather focused on the static scenes, at least for this paper. Let me follow up and say that's that's okay. Um, <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's very good. Um, but what might you do next to uh, address that issue? I mean, cars are pretty ubiquitous in these scenes. Um, sorry again. Why we uh, why we ignore them? Or you mean? I will maybe not ignore them, but actually find them and account for them. The, <laughs> um, I think uh, we are unable to find moving cars now. We are able to find only the parked cars. Um, we were considering to combine this approach with some object detector, which would then allow to, to visualize also dynamic objects or correctly rec reconstruct this dynamic object. But in this approach, we have kind of simplified. <laughs>